Hi, and welcome to my playhouse. And today I'm visiting the biggest independent broker here in Denmark who supplies server hardware that is refurbished that you can get for cheaper. So, and they just happen to have a lot of equipment on stock. And now that I'm here, they generously let me um, go over some of the stuff. So I'm gonna be doing a couple of videos on some of the equipment that I don't usually have access to. So the first server I picked from their warehouse is a HP server. It's the DL360 Generation 8. So uh, let's see that one. Here it is on the table. The HP Proliant DL360P Generation 8. This server is able to take two CPUs and, and it goes up to the version 2 of the E5 2600 series. It um, has eight drives here on the front, two and a half inch drives. Um, this one is kind of a CTO uh, server. There is absolutely the absolute minimum inside of this server. So, but on the front, we have the brackets to release the server and get it out of the racks, both sides. On this bracket, there's a couple of LEDs. This one is the health status, and this one is network activity. Drive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one is equipped with an SID, which is a tiny little diagnostics panel that pops out. So if there's something wrong with the power supplies, you get an error up here. If there's something wrong with one of the network cards, well, it pops up here and you can probably also see the network traffic blinking on those mm, might. Then you have riser card over temperature amperage status and power cap. Then there is an LED for each of the two CPUs, CPU 1, CPU 2. And then this server is equipped with 24 slots of memory. So there's a little LED for each of those memory blocks. Then it has it has room for eight fans in there, so also the fans are there. Otherwise, we have a screen out connection, and this is um, not normal. HP has put a display port in here, so you need a display output to connect to the front of the server. Uh, we'll see if that's also true when we move around the back. Otherwise, we have two USB connectors. These looks to be USB 2. Mm, it doesn't really say. And HP has this pop out where the serial number and the password for the ILO adapter is located. So, well, it's a one use server and it's a rather popular server. The DL360P is the equivalent of the DL380, where the 380 is the two use server and the 360 is the one u server so around the back this server is kind of empty we have a pci express port here we have a half height pci express port right there then we have room for the little daughter board that usually goes into these one u servers and now also two u servers but on the back they have actually chosen to put in a vga connection so that's awesome for all those old systems kvm switches and stuff that consoles that have these plugs there has been room for a serial connection and we have the plug for the ILO adapter then we have the locating beacon so when you press this in the front of the server you can locate the server on the back we have four USB ports um, probably also USB 2 connections back here and there is room for two power supplies this one does not have the power supplies which is unfortunate but um, as far as I remember the DL360 shares power supplies with the DL380 so even though it's a 1U server you can still use the power supplies from a 2U server the most common power supply for this server is a 460 watt power supply that, and it's a gold power supply um, as you can see there is no network cards in here you have to have your network cards in this slot um, when you get this server um, because there is no network this is all power 
so you have to have your network connections over here and that's a new way they are going with this it has been really normal for every server to have at least a couple of 1g connections but now it's getting more and more popular with 10g connections and these are both available in normal cable and in fiber optic cable so hp does not know what you want so they have just totally left it out so when you get a server you can't buy this from new anymore but it's something to be mindful of when you are picking a server remember that it needs some networking as well in the front we forgot something this is also available with a cd-rom drive dvd drive cd-rom drive rewritable uh, you name it and it has a uid that's the button that you press and on the back it will light up so if you have a rack full of these well you press this button to notify that you're gonna check the network connection on the back for this and when you press this it will light up blue on the back of the server also there is a power on button um, not totally unimportant that uh, you can actually turn on and off the server so that's uh, there and i'm pretty sure that it it must light up when you connect power to this otherwise it's just very black and dark and secret as a lot of other hp servers there's a little bracket here on top that you press in a button you can actually lock it with a screwdriver it's not that secure but well you need a screwdriver to open it anyway so you open that and this slides back and you open up the lid this is a old refurbished server so it has some good scratches on it inside the server here we see what it's made of very front of the server is the hard drives and right behind there is the back plane for the hard drives and there is just one connector and there is one connector here and there's another connector uh, kind of hidden away down here but it's actually one circuit board all the way through so it comes automatically with room for the, all of the eight discs which is awesome the next roll are the fans we have a couple of extra fans here so we can just try and pop one of these in and well, this is almost too easy you pop it in and you press that down and it's in it's locked in place pop it out again open remove no problem whatsoever this server is equipped with 24 ram dims so with 24 ram slots in here uh, if you occupy those with all 32 gigabyte blocks you can put in 768 gigabytes of memory in this particular model of servers cpus already talked about that this takes the e5 series 2600 generation or version 1 and 2 all the way up to the top ones uh, we put in a, a ram block here this is um, actually ibm ram so well, that's doesn't have to be there next thing in the server we have the power from the backplane coming down here and connecting in here here is the BIOS battery which is probably a normal CR30 CR2032 that just pops in there then we have one USB port here for the if you want to put in an internal hypervisor that is also available in an SD slot so you can have an SD card that you pop in here and it does exactly the same thing as the USB stick I'm not sure if you can use both if um, if you knew that uh, do leave that in the comments I'm I'm not sure if you have tried that and it works please leave your message about that next thing we have here is a SATA controller this is regularly used for the CD-ROM drive so you would have this going down probably around here and over to a CD-ROM drive right there it's not regularly used inside the server for anything else especially not in one u server then we have the riser cards over here and um, there are one riser card that works for both ports the riser card is easily removed with these uh, weird turny handle things everything blue you need to turn the server off anything orange like the fans or this weird reddish colors you can do while the server is running so you can slide the server out of the rack take the cover off and exchange a fan while it's still running which is awesome it's a normal thing on enterprise servers like this to um, to be able to do that trick 
So when we pop this up, we find that we have a X16 PCI Express slot here, and we have an X8 PCI Express slot there. And so we have an X16 for the long, for the full height, and we have an X8 for the half height slot. So one PCI card goes down there, and we have another one there. So that's the X8. So that might not, well, it might actually not be possible to put in an X16 here. I just realized that this is an X16, this is an X8, so you might actually be limited by that. Also, we have the daughter board down here, and that's usually where HP supplies their network adapters. So you would put in your network adapter here, you could have four 1 gigabit ports, or you could have two 10 gigabit ports, or you could have whatever HP supplies in this small and weird form factor that is there. It much depends on which connections you really want out the back. Then HP has their own funny setup for their RAID controller, which is put in over here. It's usually used for putting in a RAID controller, or actually the RAID controller is on the system board, but you can get an expansion for that RAID controller. So if the RAID controller on the system board is not does not meet your needs, well, you can put in some extra cards here, cache controller and stuff, and, and it will be able to do more stuff for you. So that was a quick overview of the HP DL360 Generation 8. This is not a very old server, it's still widely available. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description so you can actually go and see if this is something that you just happens to need. So, Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and see the next video that I'm going to do on the server right behind me as soon as I press stop on this recording. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.